Hello. I noticed um, a PowerPoint slide today on Twitter about what Chinese visitors to the UK are most interested in when they visit. And it, it caught my attention, so I, I thought I'd do a little bit of a research on it and, and a short talk. So this slide was about people visiting the UK on holiday, not for study. Um, I would hope that most students coming to the UK are mostly interested in their studies, which was not mentioned in the slide. So this slide led me to do uh, a little research about Chinese visitors to the UK. Uh, I'll firstly describe some of the main cultural motivations for visiting, uh, then look at the numbers of visitors and what they spend, and lastly consider the, uh, the student population. So the most popular part of a, a visit by a Chinese person to the UK is to see Buckingham Palace, the home of the Queen. Uh, the monarchy is clearly of interest to many overseas visitors and the Chinese are no different in that respect, it seems. It's interesting that many British people dislike the idea of a king or queen who is, after all, an unelected head of state. Although the Queen has no effective power to run the state, she is influential and the cost of maintaining the monarchy in the UK is estimated to be over £300 million per year, financed by the taxpayer. Sounds like quite a lot, doesn't it? Uh, different figures are quoted about how much the royal family costs people. Uh, from 56, pound, fi sorry, 56 pence per year per citizen to over £11 pounds, uh, per year for tax-paying citizens. Uh, quite different figures there. The royal family and the palaces are obviously popular tourist attractions, and figures suggest that for every pound spent on the royal family, up to £14 pounds is returned to the UK wallet or purse through tourism. Basically, if the royal family did not exist, Britain would receive fewer tourists who would spend less money here, resulting in a net loss to the economy. I don't honestly have strong feelings either way about the, uh, the monarchy. I digress, though. Returning to our Chinese tourists, uh, other popular attractions are our fictional and real historical people and events from literature, uh, such as Shakespeare, Sherlock Holmes, Agatha Christie, Charles Dickens, Paddington Bear, and more recently, Harry Potter. Uh, the TV series Downton Abbey is also on the list, as are the Beatles and music festivals more generally. Uh, I know Chinese uh, people love their food, so not surprisingly, food is near the top of the list. I just hope that Chinese visitors do not leave the UK having only eaten fish and chips. I also hope they don't only search out the many Chinese restaurants here. I know that British food has a fairly bad reputation in the world, but there are some rather fine meals to be had in the UK. Weirdly, for me at least, uh, the London Underground is in fifth place. Uh, it has to be one of the worst ways to travel around London, but I suppose it is an iconic part of the capital. Uh, the Red London double-decker buses and black uh, taxis are also on the list. Shopping is also popular, uh, with British fashion labels and high street shopping quite high on this list. Uh, one thing not mentioned on the list but listed in second place behind Buckingham Palace by other articles on the subject is a place called Bicester Village. Uh, Bicester is a shopping village in Oxfordshire, uh, about an hour or so from London, where you can buy designer brands at discount prices. So fans of Prada and Yves Saint Laurent can shop till they drop at Bicester. Sounds like hell on earth to me. Uh, so let's look briefly at how popular the UK as a destination for Chinese tourists is. Um, not surprisingly, London is the main reason to visit, although Scotland is also popular. 
In 2015, over a quarter of a million Chinese tourists visited the UK. Uh, this number is rising year on year from about 90,000 in 2009, so quite a large increase. Uh, these visitors spent on average over £2,000 during their visits, uh, which on average lasted 14 nights. Uh, so total expenditure by Chinese tourists in the UK in 2015 was over half a billion pounds. Uh, these figures are from the Visit Britain organisation. Now, as I said at the start, these numbers do not include students, so let's quickly look at that market. Uh, in the 2014 to 15 academic year, UK KISA, that's the UK Council for International Student Affairs, report that there were nearly half a million overseas students in the UK. Of those, uh, nearly 90,000 were Chinese with Indians and Nigerians making up the next largest groups, although in much smaller numbers than the Chinese students. Obviously these students pay uh, for their studies and pay for their living expenses while in the UK. So they make not only a valuable addition to the cultural mix of uh, UK education, but also a four billion pound contribution to the economy. So to conclude, it seems that in difficult economic times, tourism and education are very fruitful businesses for the UK. So I suppose God save the Queen and God save our universities. Thank you.